Okay, everybody, this is the start of the tutorial for the spiral sock, the no heel sock, the original vanilla sock, or as I call them, go to bed socks. Uh, I'm not sure how much they would withstand to wear and tear, but if you just want to keep your feet warm, it's wonderful. Today I have the Adria Phil Knit Cole. Let's uh, see, it says it matches with Regina, if that matters to you. I believe it was mostly wool. This color, this rainbow type color is color shade. I guess that's the name for it. Yeah, 100% Merino Superwash. Gotta love it. And then I love these old vintage boy, 55 cent, uh, size two double point knitting needles. And so let's get started. To truly start the project or to truly understand it ahead of time, graph paper and writing everything out so that you understand it matters. And they suggest 50 grams per sock. Because there are, I had to actually look really long and hard for this pattern. I thought I had it saved. And I must have thrown it out a long time ago because it was not where I thought it was. So after much digging and translating, we have it. The gauge is 36 stitches by 44 rows, if you can think like a square. Which is the equivalent of 10 centimeters or over 4 inches, which is about that long. So... Okay, we have a slip stitch on our top needle, and this just happens to be where the break in the color is, so <laughs> there's dark purple and there's light purple. This is a long tail. Normally, I don't care for long tail type of casts on, but this is the special magic loop, which will make your stitches look like straight knit, like there's no seam. It's the same as the Kirstner stitch, but this is easier to do, so long as you keep the stitches loose on the needles. You have your simple slip knot. It has to be on the top. This is Judy's Magic Cast On, which is, it mimics the Kirstner stitch on toes. If that makes any sense for the more advanced knitters. But basically it'll look like you don't have a seam and that's why it's so important to at least understand this one type of long tail cast on. I don't care much for any other long tail cast on, but this one is so worth it. The top one goes back to your ball. The bottom one does not. And I have it split right where the color changes in the ball. So each needle will actually end up being a different color of yarn. <coughs> so that's actually quite helpful. And now we have the top goes over the bottom. And you keep making these figure eights, kind of. The bottom goes over. The bottom goes over the top. And make sure you keep it loose enough, because if not, you will not be able to actually knit the stitches. And go as slow as you need to. All right, it's starting to get tight again. But yeah, it's quite slippery. Some people suggest wooden needles. I don't have any in size two, so that's why we have metal. Okay, see the bottom was the last one. So top over bottom, bottom over top. They say the largest size you should cast on for is 15 stitches and the smallest you should cast on is 11. I have double wide feet and other inflation issues in my legs so I'm probably just gonna cast on 30 and figure out the width from there because I'm just gonna wear these to bed if they're oversized it doesn't matter to me there's no heel and I just want warm feet at night y'all that's it so we'll be back in a minute as soon as I'm done casting these on okay I cast on my 30 or you can follow the pattern and do 15 for more normal sized feet uh, just pay attention to which side looks like the knit side and which side looks like the purl side. Purl side has bumps. Knit side does not. And like I said, you can see the two different colors in this yarn from the variegade. So we twist this. And 
Now the dark purple is the knit one, or the, it goes back to the ball, the lighter one does not. So we just twist those and start to knit. Just as a side note, if you are using double pointed needles, try to keep them spaced a little bit apart because otherwise the stitches will really be way too tight to even try and knit them at all. Seriously. And this one, the other one, make sure it doesn't fall out on you. Just kind of leave that one in the middle. Twist it, loop, go. You're not going anywhere. A hard surface can help you keep these stitches actually on your needles. Oh, come on. This is loose. This should be easy. Come on. There we go. It's always the first few rows that are the most painful. Figuratively, emotionally, all that good stuff. Oh, my hands on this thing. Just a girl fooling around with her cell phone in a craft room. That's about it. This would be a good point once you get halfway through the second needle to split it up. Once this is set up, you'll be fine. It's actually rather enjoyable for me to knit with double pointed needles. But it's the setup that can make you question your reasons. <laughs> Plus, I'm not very good at circulars, so... I know it looks like a bunch of pointy objects, but they do eventually work out. <laughs> as long as they all go in the right directions. These do eventually work out. There we go. There we go. And there is your start. This is one of those crazy moments in life where it works out. I got my first row generically done, or halfway done, and this pattern assumed that I had five double point needles when most sets only come with four. <laughs> so this is why I hoard extra double pointed needles and the size 2 actually works really good for keeping your hair up. Like if you like doing your hair in a French bun or something. They're, if you have extra long hair, they're really good for keeping your head up. But now you can actually follow the pattern the right way. Let's see where this comes from. Okay. So basically you're just keeping increases on either side of your sock. So it goes down this just evenly. That's it. All right, there's a little bit more to see now. The needles somewhat block everything. But yeah, you did your first knit round, and then the increase row is knit one, knit front back, knit to the last three stitches of the second needle, and the fourth needle, and then you should just end with a knit front back, knit two, which just makes the double increase lines down each side. Like I said, I did upgrade to four needles. This is why you should save every single double point of needle possible. But as you can see, that is stockinette starting in there. Because the second row is just knitting all the way around. And I've done that. And this cast off line is the only thing telling me where my beginning is. I mean, you could stitch mark it, but... This is me we're talking about. Come on. <laughs> when I'm desperate, I'll do it. But we have knit one. And knit front back. Just make sure you keep your edges tight. 
because when they get loose, it really is a pain. So we knit the front, and then we twist the needle over to go into the back of that same stitch. Loop it over again, knit front back. And now knit to three stitches before the second needle, or on the second needle, because that was, this is first needle, first increase. It just helps you remember where you are at all times. So we're going from two straight lines to a circle. All right, first needle done, second needle, which is the other half. If you just look at it this way, look at first needle, second needle, and all the increases, they just kind of start to make sense. Third stitch, knit front back. And then you just knit those two. Knit one, knit front back. I know this looked harder from earlier, but it just starts to feel easy. You start to like the extra smoothness of the knitting needles. The wool really does glide right over it and try to stay centered here. <laughs> Just knit all the way across till your fourth needle. And if you think you can just mark certain needles, no, they just rotate throughout. So, they just keep rotating, rotating, rotating. Love it when the color changes. Knit front back. And the next row, you just knit. And then the instruction says do this for a total of nine times or if you know how wide your feet are do it until it's wide enough in my opinion and by then you'll have enough knitting done that it'll already create a swatch so figure out what's right for you keep your feet warm this winter okay just to help people learn this a little bit um I did move where the beginning was, but we'll just show this as an example. We'll see if this is your first needle. You knit one, knit front back, you knit to the end. That's needle one. Then you just start knitting on needle two. But then three stitches before the end, knit front back, knit three. Then we start it all over again. We have knit one, knit front back, knit to the end. Now I'm moving on to the fourth needle. Knit, knit to three before the end, knit front back, knit the rest. Second row, do all knitting. And do this nine times. You'll know. You'll be able to count. Uh, you'll be able to see it in the sides. Because if you can see that. You can count the rows. They fan out. It's there. This is how you read it. It's very self-explanatory. This was the graph that was shown on one of the patterns. Because you can go either direction with how your twist is. It's like knowing what direction the cyclone blows in. This, to me, was a little bit busy. So, I rewrote it row by row. Because if you want to understand something, that's usually the best way to do it. 
this is all that it is. It is a six stitch repeat. The solids are knit, the dashes are pearls. You do it for six, you move it over one. You do it for six, you move it over one. And then you just repeat that for as long as you want, because it's a tube. It's kind of like the song that never ends and keeps going on and on, my friends. That's, I think that's all I'm allowed to sing before I owe people money. But yes, that's all that it is. Just as a side note, as you're going around and doing your three knit, three purl stitches, especially here in the round, if you twist your stitches, it can make things a little bit tight. So because of how these are sitting on the needle, I find that if you do the back loop for all purl stitches only, you don't twist your stitches, it lays flatter, and it looks like stockinette. Like machine-made stockinette. So you just go through the back like that. And just see how it's just flatter that way. Otherwise, everything is status quo. Try to ignore all the scraping because the needles are so long. And when you do six rows of that, move everything over one. Okay, we'll get this done while the sun is still up. Now, as much as I worked on this <coughs> almost all day yesterday, I got this far. But it's the basics. I got at least one pattern change out of it. And now I know exactly how to make this toe up, which you do need for toe up socks just about everywhere. And it is the best version of it. Because, like I said, do you see a seam hardly? If the color didn't change, you would not see a seam at all. And I was glad I put in the extra stitches because this will actually be wide enough to go over my foot. Yay, first time out. I love being able to measure with my eyes. It's wonderful. But if you look, it has started. Now, I have no clue how long this will take me to finish because... I don't prefer using size 2 needles. <laughs> the first socks I ever made, which were top down, I used a size 5. And it was like pure cotton. and They were a little chunky, but I didn't care. <laughs> but we'll see. I'm slowly getting used to the smallness and just handling so many needles again. And I still love... If you have the table, you really can like use them like a thimble almost to help move them around and yes it still looks like a weapon to me <laughs> but I'm liking the way it's coming out it's really soft for wool self striping and yee this will be interesting <laughs> but that's basically all it is as far as tutorial goes uh, eventually when I finish two of them I will post pictures to everywhere because these will be like my Arc de Triomphe. <laughs> There's only going to be one, well, one in this color anyway. So yes, and I did try converting over to a pair of circulars and now I remember why I only use double pointed. I do know how to do, well, you pull the string out and stuff and yes, I had very flexible string but no, 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 no. I think it's my, um, it's the only time I'm really a control freak. Because when you have four stitch, four needles, you can fix it wherever it's at. You have four points of access to change, fix, or measure. Especially with socks. Like, if you do top down versus bottom up. Like, you'll know that that's your heel and the rest of it isn't. And then you can figure out where you need to increase but isolate the one that isn't part of it. And structurally, it just visually helps me. Because if I can see it, I can just go. I can see it, I can just go. So, God bless those who can use circular needles. Uh, the only one I haven't tried effectively. Because... It's like when you first learn to knit, you have to create muscle memory. 
it's those really, really small nine inch uh, circulars that you just literally do in a very, very small circle for socks. I've never gotten good at those. I mean, I did have one once and I sold it just because I wasn't in a sock mood. Now that I'm in a sock mood, maybe, maybe. But I still say these are great for putting your hair up. <laughs> and having a few of them around, like even just a stick pin for a ponytail, glue something to the end of it. I just have more purpose for double pointed needles than anything else, especially the wooden ones. But my grandma got me stuck on metal and that's what I still got. <laughs> So we'll see how long this yarn, not yarn, sock fetish lasts because there are always fetishes. They come, they go. It's like anything crafting. It's here for now, but mm, as long as I'm still in the craft, that's all that really technically matters. So, but yes, that's as far as we got all day yesterday among doing a few other things. Not much else. It was, I thought I was finishing up watching Supernatural because I thought originally or a million years ago when I started watching it on Netflix that there was only 10 seasons. So I thought, okay, I'll just finish it up and then, you know, they'll release the other five or whatever later. No, they released all of them. So, spooky y'all. Have a good one.